So what we're going to do is we are going to go through how Watson works and just show you a bit why the brains behind Watson. It's not all brawn. It's a brainy brawn. EU, the European Union for 200. This you guys should know. Yeah? Istanbul. What is Istanbul? Okay. So first of all, look at the interaction. The interaction is in the form of an answer. I don't like that Jeopardy thing of in the form of a question. Whatever, it's a, it's a question. And the response is in the form of text uh, to speech. Now, you may not like how Watson speaks. I actually love it, right? But it's, it's definitely more humanizing, more human than what it would have been in the past. So you've taken all of the knowledge, that concept of knowledge, and wrapped it in an interface. And it's that interface that's at least as powerful as the knowledge that's behind it. Now, how does this, how does this actually work? Now, it so turns out that Jeopardy has a set of questions which are general knowledge. So, so Vijay, uh, I'm sad to say, but I don't expect a question on the ideas economy in Jeopardy over the course of next few months. We're working on it. We are working on it, exactly. And, and I hope in five years, there's a question on, on the ideas economy in, because it would have become part of general knowledge, right? So that's the that's beauty about it, that the, the amount of information that you're dealing with is what you would classify as general knowledge and isn't that large. But how do we answer it? I think it's okay, he's been talking all day, so. We take the question. We analyze it, we generate hypotheses, we collect evidence because the world is imperfect. The world is imperfect. There are many, many dimensions to how different information gets presented. The world is imperfect. There's an evidence which says Anant is a very, very smart person. Anant thinks so. There's another evidence, my kid who thinks that I'm the dumbest person in the world. My boss sometimes thinks I'm smart, sometimes I'm dumb. Hopefully near the year end when he does my evaluation, he thinks the right thing. There's contradictory evidence. How do you actually weigh this evidence and be able to combine and then be able to come up with this kind of probability things? So this part, this part about dealing with information that is ambiguous and yet with some degree of certitude, coming up with the right answer, and if you're not confident, not saying it, is another very, very interesting part about how do you actually deal with big data. So this is what, what we do. I'm, I'm very glad that Vijay gave me the credit for Watson. If you recall that Africa curve, I was somewhere in Africa, and Watson is somewhere on the east coast of uh, United States. So yes, I can claim some, some aspects of Watson, but really there was a very uh, good dedicated team that actually made that happen. But, but here's the thing. So there are all these evidence, evidences. You've got to kind of weigh those evidences. I'll just- Classic go, literature for 1,000. I'll just go through a couple of other things. I'll not give you commentary on them. Answer? Great. Who is Dertanian? That's the way it's pronounced. <laughs> I would have failed maybe, but I guess I, if it was Final Jeopardy, it would have been okay because I would have just written it down. So you've got to do some complex parsing. Okay. Medicine for 800. What is scarlet fever? Oh, that was brilliant. No, no need for two seconds. There's, there's my, my fat fingers or happy fingers. But this actually points to how you go from jeopardy as general knowledge to something that can actually be applied in uh, what I call, not that I coined the term, uh, Ashby coined the term, intelligent augmentation. Okay? So it's not about how jeopardy knows, how Watson knows exactly the right answer, but it's about how Watson or systems like Watson actually help a human come up with the right answer. 